Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. In this video, we are going to learn about Differential Thermal Analysis, DTA. So here are the contents of current video. We will see the introduction. We will discuss the history. Then we will see the definition of this technique. Then we will see the DTA curve. And then we will see the detailed instrumentation of this technique. So first of all, introduction. Whenever an organic chemical compound is prepared in laboratory, it is tested for its purity and stability. And one of the method is its melting point determination. This melting point determination can be performed using thermogravimetry as thermogravimetry is applied only to the solid-solid phase transitions. And another thing is melting point does not involve any mass change. So this means thermogravimetry can't work here. So a technique was required that could be able to identify such transitions and ultimately assessing the quality of materials. Now we'll see the history. Early work regarding study of heat and chemical or physical changes were largely qualitative, means there was no qualitative work. Then Lavoisier and Laplace in 1780 allowed measurement of quantities of heat energy associated with change of state and chemical reactions. But the problem with their apparatus was that it was using large quantity of sample. Its working was slow and the results were quite less accurate. But still Lavoisier work earned him a great name in the field of thermochemistry. Then Fourier worked out mathematical descriptions for heat transfer processes and he derived many equations. Then Joule's work in 19th century led to understanding of relationship of heat and work and the laws governing electrical heating which now underlie much of the thermal analysis in control of furnaces. Lee Chatelier was the first to use DTA technique when he compared temperatures given by two thermometers actually he was experimenting with clay as sample so he used two thermometers one was put inside the sample while other was out the sample outside the sample and both of these were being heated in oil bath he recorded melting transitions and further he later worked with thermocouples as temperature sensors and characterized clay materials into different categories so Lee Chatelier was the first to use this technique actually. Then Robert Austin pointed that if difference in temperature, that is sample temperature and reference temperature, is plotted against temperature or time, then a very sensitive method of detecting changes and transitions is obtained. Further, DTA can accurately measure the temperatures of thermal events that is whether the event is endothermic or exothermic so we can find easily by using DTA technique now we will see the definition of this technique so a technique in which difference in temperature between sample and reference material is monitored against time or temperature while temperature of the sample in a specified atmosphere is programmed. So actually we take difference in temperature between sample and reference material and that is taken what do you say in a plot or graph against time or temperature and temperature is properly programmed. The DTA curve is generally a plot of difference in temperature delta T as the ordinate we can say it on y-axis and on x-axis there is temperature or time an endothermic event gives downward peak while an exothermic event gives an upward peak so in DTA curve in graph we say 
we will uh, we get different peaks some are downward and some are upward so upward show exothermic while downward show the endothermic processes so here is the DTA curve you can see there is temperature on x-axis and changing temperature on y-axis and this is the starting point the peaks upward from here exhibit the exothermic process while the peak downward from here shows the endothermic process so we can say that this peak is a downward so definitely there is some endothermic event occurred and this is an upward peak so there happened some exothermic process then there is apparatus and here is the schematic diagram of DTA apparatus so here is the compartment you can see and here is the furnace these are the furnaces and these are attached to the programmer through which what do we say the program series of heating is supplied through this computer and here are the sample and reference pans through which sample and reference material is put and you can control the atmosphere of this container so here you can enter the gas and here is gas out if you if you want to provide any type of atmosphere so you can perform uh, by this way and the temperature of sample and reference material that is noted by using uh, this sensor that is a thermocouple I'm going to explain in the next slide so this is the schematic diagram of DTA apparatus if we see there are four major parts in this apparatus system and what are these the DTA sensor plus amplifier the furnace and its temperature sensor the programmer or computer the recorder or plotter so we'll now see them in detail so first of all we will see the sensors for most of the DTA units thermocouples are used as temperature sensors for both sample and reference cells now we may work at low temperature or we may work at high temperature so if we are working at low temperatures then our thermocouples may be copper constantin or chromal alumal while if we are working at high temperatures then platinum platinum 13 percent rhodium can be used there might be different arrangements for thermocouples as you can see in the diagram there are four pans two upper pans in two upper pans we can see that the thermocouples are in contact with the sample while in the two lower pans thermocouples are outside the pans means they are not in contact with the samples now we'll see the characteristics of pans crucibles and sample so pans and crucibles of different materials are in use if we are going to operate our run at low temperature then we can use aluminium pans and lids and these can be used below the melting point of aluminium and that is 660 degrees centigrade so you can see here these are the this is the aluminium pan with lid but if we have to work at higher temperature then we must have to use platinum or ceramic crucibles because their melting points are higher you can see here this is the platinum crucible and this is the ceramic crucible a standard experiment may involve sample of about 10 to 20 milligram powder means we can run this amount of sample or a disc punch from a polymer or sample may be introduced in the form of disc or it may be introduced in the form of bundle of fibers being placed in weighed leaded aluminium crucible and the total mass is recorded before start of the run sometimes an inner liner is placed on the top of the sample so that our sample can be better in contact with the base the lid of the crucible that may be fixed using a simple press and it can give sealed crucible capable of withstanding about at 2 atm pressure if we are expecting some gaseous products inside the crucible then 
there might be some pin holes that can be punched in the lid and these holes will allow the escape of these gaseous products. If we have to work at higher pressures then special crucibles have been designed for this purpose and similar is in the case of liquid samples and liquid samples are usually injected by the use of syringes. The furnace and controller. For high temperature DTA, large ceramic lined electrically heated furnaces are used with electronic control. It's a metal block wound with insulated heating element and there are two valves one for sample and other is for reference and together there is present the sensor that is the thermocouples uh, to give the satisfactory res results. Heating rates are maintained between 0 to 100 Kelvin per minute but the normal rate is about 10 Kelvin per minute and there is an extra feature in it if you are going to use it below room temperature and what is that? A cooling accessory or refrigeration unit is fixed around the cell and is cooled directly with liquid nitrogen or other coolant. There is another thing which is required and what is that? We must have to pass our dry purge gas through the cell assembly during cooling. Otherwise condensation of water or ice onto cell might occur and that will disturb our process. Now we will see about the reference material. As we know that it's a differential method means the behavior of the sample material is compared with that of the reference material. Now during process the emissivity, emissivity of sample may alter. If it undergo change in phase or it might react with some something or in atmosphere or even if there is some change in color so all of these things can be avoided by covering both the pans tightly with lids in many cases samples may be run against empty reference pan but if we want to get better results then we must have to use some inert some reference material and its properties should be similar what do you say its thermal properties actually should be similar to that of our sample material so for many experiments pure dry preheated alumina that gives satisfactory result another material is carborundum which is silicon carbide that is also being used as reference material sometimes to make thermal properties of sample and reference more comparable, sample may be diluted with reference material, provided that they should not react with each other. So now if we want to see the working of the process, then it is quite very much simpler. And that is, sample and reference materials are placed in the furnace. Okay, then furnace is controlled under temperature program programming is already set and temperature of the sample and reference is altered. During the process a differential thermocouple is set up definitely which will measure the temperature of sample and reference and that will detect the temperature difference between sample and reference cell. Here are two graphs shown in this slide. If we see on the left side there is a graph A and that has been plotted between temperature and time and you can see there are three components furnace reference and sample if you see the curve for furnace and reference then it's a smooth uh, curve you can see with the increase in time the temperature of both these components increases smoothly regularly and if we see the curve of sample then with the passage of time definitely the temperature of sample also increases but the increase in temperature of some sample is not not that on regular basis there are certain dips you can see 
and why these are happening because in sample there are happening different chemical changes that is why the rise in temperature is quite irregular and if you see on the right side on graph B this is the DTA curve that has been plotted between temperature difference and time and you can see uh, this curve there are different peaks the downward peaks show the endothermic phenomena while the upward peaks show the exothermic phenomena so dear student this is all about today's lecture thanks for watching like my video and if you didn't subscribe my channel yet then subscribe it because a large number of videos are coming very shortly so to keep in touch with my upcoming videos subscribe my channel and thank you very much